This conference will now be recorded. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, just a recap. Uh, so as this is the second session, so I will give you like a, a brief introduction about the Azure. I mean, uh, let's the background of the first session and then we'll, we'll continue. So here, as we discussed, so right now actually we are using Azure as a public cloud. So the main intention is to prepare the infrastructure with the help of this Azure, Azure public cloud. So like, uh, as you know, like we are having like a different types of different uh, cloud systems are available in the market like AWS, Azure as, as well as GCP. But the main competition is between main competition between the Azure as well as AWS. But right now, uh, compared to AWS, so Azure is having more scope, uh, like to migrate the application, as uh, like a big, just because of the uh, the security as well as the cost as well as the maintenance as well as the service uh, support uh, provided by the Microsoft team. <clears throat> so compared to aws okay so that's the reason most of our applications so like the most of the companies actually they started their uh, uh, like uh, migrating their existing applications from on-prem system to the cloud second point is as we already discussed in the last session so most like some of the like applications which are running on aws cloud so they also most of them so they also they started migrating like uh, from AWS system to the Azure. So, <clears throat> so the main uh, the, the the three uh, main advantages are the main uh, parameters uh, like while uh, uh, while migrating the application from on-prem system to the cloud are the first one is the security, second one is the uh, cost, and third one is the maintenance. So if you compare with the uh, like on-prem system, okay. If you a uh, cost-wise, like a cost-wise public cloud, Azure public cloud is providing uh, less cost, like providing their uh, resources uh, for less uh, less cost. Second thing is security. So we are having different types of security methodologies or models. With the help of this, we can able to protect our service, which are running on, uh, like which are running use by using the Azure public cloud. And the third one is maintenance. So whenever there is a <clears throat> new updates or uh, version upgradation, something. So if you want to like upgrade or if you want to maintain the application, yes, you can able to maintain the application by your own, or you can able to migrate your um, uh, upgrade your versions or upgrade your applications from the lower version to the higher versions without any issues. So like this, actually, we are having like a three different types of three three important advantages, okay, uh, which we which we can able to identify, which we can able to get it, okay, uh, with the help of the like Azure Public Cloud. So now we'll start this. As I said, in real time program. So uh, as we know, like we are using the like licensed versions, right? So the licensed versions, okay, so we can call it as a subscriptions. So the subscription is nothing but, so this is this is nothing but a licensed version. And for this, uh, you I mean, while, I mean, when whenever you are going to like uh, raise any kind of request to get the subscription, by the time actually you will get the subscription ID, subscription name, as well as uh, tenant ID. So the one is subscription ID, the second one is the subscription name and the third one is the tenant id so uh, these three like uh, these three values are these three um, are like uh, uh, these three values actually you will get uh, while uh, while you request for the, the subscription and i will explain you what exactly the subscription id subscription name tenant id and how you will how we will get in real time program and one more important thing is as we already discussed so the point is uh, for non-prod, make sure that you should raise a separate subscription for prod environments. So make sure you should create a, you should raise for, you should submit for a separate subscription access. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, like 
coming to the subscription id subscription name and tenant id so how you will get this subscription id name and tenant id see uh, like for uh, for our uh, like a uh, personal usage purpose or personal practice purpose see when you want to like uh, when you want to get the like azure azure access so simply what you can do you can go to the uh, portal dot uh, azure dot com so here you can able to raise a like a free trial account okay free trial subscription okay once you submit your credit card details actually they will detect two rupees and they will provide you 13300 credits okay with the help of those credits you can able to uh, like uh, run your uh, like a practice sessions for one month okay but in real time program actually we are not going to use that free trial uh, free trial subscription site right? you make sure that we should have a like a licensed versions so now licensed versions like um, when you when you submit a licensed version so as i said you will get a subscription id subscription name tenant id so how you will get this a subscription id name and tenant id this is very very important and uh, while we are appearing for the like a fundamental exam as well as while we are uh, uh, appearing for any kind of like interviews actually they will ask you like how you will get the subscription id name as well as the tenant id so this is very very important make sure we should understand see in real time program <clears throat> so we people that means i i'm i'm working as a cloud devops engineer so i'm i'm totally i'm i'm, I'm belongs to a separate i mean uh, like a third party team so we will have the dev team members and we will have the enterprise architecture team enterprise architect team and we are we will have a eas team enterprise infrastructure sorry enterprise infrastructure security team okay these are the like three different team members will be available see this particular team that means the dev team if let's say for example they decided to migrate their application from on prem system to the cloud so by the time simply they will go and they will uh, like uh, contact uh, like what to call microsoft team and they will provide the subscription this is not the right mm, this is not the um, exact process so make sure that the dev team member make sure they should provide their on prem architectural diagram to the ea team enterprise architecture team enterprise architecture team which is uh, belongs to the cloud so make sure that they should send their their existing architecture diagram to the ea team so what exactly that uh, like uh, and uh, like architecture diagram contains the architecture diagram contains the the source of the application okay in on prem on prem is nothing but non cloud and second one is uh, what is the like a target okay and uh, who will be the beneficiaries that is nothing but a users and uh, how they are providing the login uh, how they are allowing the users that is nothing but a login details and second thing is how they are protecting their uh, application that is nothing but a security so this kind of information they will provide they will provide it in the like in the form of an architecture diagram so the point is here once they submit it don't put it a one minute Okay, I'm sorry. See, once they submitted their once once they submitted this architecture diagram to the EA team, so based on the existing architecture diagram, they will prepare a uh, the diagram which is belongs to the cloud. So in cloud also we are make sure that we need to prepare the like arc uh, like infrastructure for that particular application, right? So make sure that how how we can i mean how the cloud team uh, will prepare the like infrastructure and how, uh, how they will uh, provide the security and how they will allow the users to access the application and um, uh, how to access the source okay so, uh, source of that particular application so everything will be defined in the form of a cloud architecture diagram so so uh, like uh, uh, like uh, as i said with reference to the 
the existing architecture diagram which is belongs to the on on prem with reference to that the cloud ea team okay they will prepare the the architecture diagram okay so which will which is belongs to the azure public cloud so that means in that particular diagram actually they will show us that means they will show the uh like uh, they will show the like uh, like how they how they are going to like allow that uh, sources uh like uh, i mean uh, uh, the source for that particular application and how they will allow the users and what kind of like login systems actually they, they are going to provide and how they are going to protect the application with the help of different types of security models and how to protect the like uh, uh, i mean application from the unauthorized users or another edge tickets so this kind of information will be captured or will be defined in the form of a cloud architect diagram okay i hope you understand this uh, okay the point is here once they define the like architecture diagram so again they will send it back to the dev team okay this is not one time activity or, or i can say that uh, within like in, in a single meeting actually they will not uh, decide okay we will go with the like uh, the solutions uh, uh, provided by the ea team okay so simply i mean they will not uh, do like that so make sure that actually they will have i mean so uh, make sure that uh, uh, more like almost four to five five different types of meetings will be happened between the like dev team as well as the enterprise architecture team okay so at the one fine day actually so based on the suggestions made by uh, dev team the ea team will uh, change the uh, what you called uh, uh, the architecture diagram okay and uh, they will provide the different types of solutions and uh, everything and they will provide the, the final uh, uh, the diagram to the dev team so the point is here so after four to five meetings okay just assume that my dev team actually actually they decided to go with the solutions go with the solution provided by the ea team so that means here finalized the okay finalized the the diagram okay that is nothing but a so the solutions to provide the solution provided by the enterprise architecture team so once it is done what is the next step simply whatever the like a diagram provided by the ea team okay what will happen so the dev team members actually the dev team architect okay what they are going to do they will send an email to the eas team okay with the finalized diagram so make sure that actually once it is done okay once the diagram is finalized so make sure that uh, the uh, dev, the dev team management or the dev team architect okay make sure that they, they, they should send a final diagram to the eas team and uh, they will request the like a team to provide the proper approval okay like uh, <clears throat> okay proper approval okay so now the point is eis team enterprise infrastructure security team simply they will not provide the approval so they will send a questionnaire 50 questions template okay will be sent it by the like eis team to the dev team architect okay make sure that the dev team architect make sure they should complete and they should answer all the 50 questions okay they should answer all the 50 questions at least 90 percent of the questionnaire should be answered okay why so what kind of like a questions actually they will send it to the like a dev team see what is the purpose of the questions will be like this what is the purpose of migrating the application from on-prem system to the cloud how to protect the like uh, um, sensitive data in the cloud and what kind of security uh, setup that we are going to implement in the cloud. Okay, like this, actually they will send, uh, they will prepare 50 questions and they will send it to, to the dev team architect. And the dev team architect will, I mean, usually they will answer all the 50 questions and again, they will uh, send it back to the EIS team. The point is here, once EIS team member is happy or once, once they agree with them, the answers provided by the dev team so this particular person this particular team will raise a request a subscription request to the microsoft team okay so this particular team eas team will send a like a subscription request to them like a microsoft team so in this in this context so dev team 
actually they are not going to send any kind of subscription request or ea team they will not send any kind of subscription request who will send eas team will send the subscription request to the microsoft team okay so by the time so like uh, what kind of information that the eas team needs to provide to the microsoft team so to get the subscription so here uh, they will uh, they will send the details like uh, application id okay and the application name okay and uh, like a uh, 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 like a target audience like a number of uh, like a targeted uh, audience okay like this actually they will send you some few important information uh, to the like microsoft team so by the time the microsoft people okay they will pro prepare one subscription and they they will send it to back send it back to the eas team members so subscription is nothing but here the licensed version of the azure public cloud okay so in this scenario as i said subscription id subscription name okay these two are the like uh, what you called the uh, unique numbers so unique uh, information okay subscription id is the unique one subscription name will be the unique one and the tenant id okay it will be like a uh, same for the non prod as well as the production now coming to the i'm repeating once again subscription id subscription name okay these two are uh, uh, same for non prod but different from the production but whereas coming to the tenant id so tenant id will be the same okay for both the non prod as well as the production environment okay is this clear any questions uh, ajay and prabhakar no i am clear okay ajay any questions hey, you are on mute one small Sorry, query uh, no, no questions Regarding this yeah, target, yeah. whatever, the, whatever the target, target is nothing but the uh, cloud resources you, you mean to say, like? Correct, correct, correct. Right. So here the target is nothing but on-prem target systems. Okay, you I mean okay. source and target. So same thing actually. Make sure uh, the EA team actually will prepare the diagram with the target resources. What kind of like resources that they are using, like uh, how they are allowing the sources information, source uh, like inputs. And how they are uh, processing, and how they will send it back to the the target audience. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Clear. Thank you. Uh, Ajay, uh, is it okay for you? Yes. Yeah, sir. I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay, Ajay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Please mute your microphone. Yep. Thank you. All. <laughs> okay. So next one, the 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 thing is here. So make sure that. Uh, so even though like uh, we are having like different profiles in our cloud okay if you go with uh, azure or aws so we are having a specific profile specific roles so we are having the like admin we are having the like uh, architect okay so like this actually we are having like uh, different types of like uh, 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 what do you call uh, different types of roles but make sure that even though if you are working as a admin or if you are working as a like a cloud developer or if you are working as a architect so make sure that you should understand the like a uh, the existing system which is running okay so which is running on uh, on prem okay so make sure that you should thoroughly you should understand at the same time make sure that you should understand like uh, how to prepare the like a solution uh, in the uh, with uh, with the help of the like azure public cloud so that means uh, so make sure that we should understand what kind of like uh, resources okay what kind of resources so that we need to uh, use and how to use when to use okay so make sure we should have a proper knowledge on that so the point is here irrespective of your profile irrespective of your role okay which you are playing in the in your project so make sure that you should understand the architecture diagram and you should understand each and every services which we are using in the azure public cloud so and one more important thing is so there is no guarantee that that so let's say uh, like uh, for one of the applications actually i am using like uh, some kind of like resources abc example abc 
but some other i mean if you take other other uh, other applications okay i may or i may not use the same kind of like resources because as per the as per the application requirement only actually i need to choose the appropriate resource okay don't think that okay so whatever the resources that we are using for application a the same resources i can able to i can use it for the application b so that means i can recreate the same resources for application b okay as as i said like it may or may not be possible so may not be applicable okay so because sometimes actually I, 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 let me explain some kind of like real time uh, issues so for one of the application actually we are using the like the high level securities like uh, uh, we are using nsg rules we are using the firewalls we are using the uh, like w what you call waf pro waf uh, policies we are using the application gateways we are using uh, or the b2c client etc okay but so for some of the applications actually we we are we are not going to use these many kind of like uh, resources okay so basic resources are common for every application but uh, uh, but if you take like uh, high profile uh, high profile uh, like resources okay so in 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 that scenario like uh, we may or we may not use the same kind of like resources in all the in other applications okay please uh, keep in mind in that particular point okay the next one <clears throat> right so now coming to the like the profiles here so we are we will get like a two different access policies if you go with an as i said like a non-prod as well as a production subscription so like uh, once your application is uh, like uh, once you receive once your application receives the like what you call the, the subscription access okay so as a like a, a teammate or as a a uh, cloud engineer so make sure that you need to get the access for that particular subscription so in this scenario so we will get like a two different um, access type one is the like a contributor okay one is the like a contributor access and second one is the owner so these are the two different types of like a profiles which we are having or these are the two, two different types of access policies which we are having for every uh, individual like a subscriptions so uh, so make sure once you like once your application director or once your application manager uh, owner as i said okay will once he will he will receive the once he receives the like a subscription okay subscription id and everything so make sure that as a cloud engineer make sure you need to raise a request for the like this for that particular subscription either with the contributor access for uh, either for the contributor access or either for the owner access what is the difference and who get the contributor as well as who will get the like owner access we'll discuss <clears throat> so let's say for example in my team actually I'm, we are having like uh, four members let's say for example four members team so all the four members will get uh, one two three and uh, four all the four members will get the contributor access only one person will get the like uh, owner access so owner plus contributor okay so only one person will get the owner plus contributor access so all the four members will get one two three four will get the contributor and only one person any one of the one person will get the like owner access so what is the difference between these two so if you go with the contributor access so by the time so we can able to create almost 97 percent of we can we can use 97 percent of resources which we are having in azure public cloud 97 percent is 97 percent of the resources we can able to use but uh, coming to the owner so here we can use we can we can able to create 100 percent we can we can able to use 100 percent resources okay so why the point is here coming to the contributor so contributor if let's say for example if we have the like a contributor access so by that time actually you are unable to create the service principle so if there is no if you don't have any if you are unable to prepare the service principle you are unable to prepare the aks cluster if you are unable to prepare the service principle and the aks cluster you are unable to prepare the like oauth b2c client okay oauth b2c client so so the point is here major major resources so sp is the major resource service principle aks is a major resource or the b2c is the major resource and if you take like uh, 
like uh, cosmos collections okay that is the like a major resource and uh, if you want to like uh, uh, configure the service principle in a case cluster you are unable to do it with the help of the contributor access so like this like major resources we are unable to create it with the help of the contributor but whereas coming to the like owner access so you can able to prepare the so no, you can able to prepare whatever the like a major resources that we are having so that is nothing but service principle aks cluster or the b2c application gateway so like this actually we can able to prepare major resources with the help of the owner access is this clear see the why because why like oh no why uh, let's say uh, why the person who is having the contributor access why he is unable to prepare the service principle so uh, why don't like uh, no Uh, like uh, uh, to restrict the uh, uh, the the cloud engineer to prepare the service principle because as I as I already told you that so make sure that uh, while preparing the infrastructure always you should uh, uh, understand you should uh, like uh, uh, aware of the cost cost of the resource okay cost of the service resource is nothing but a service here cost of the service which we are going to create okay second thing is if let's say for example in my team all the four members are having the owner access everyone can able to prepare the service principle everyone can be able to prepare the aks cluster everyone can able to modify the existing structure without notifying the others so in this scenario, we are unable to trace out and we are unable to identify who prepared and who modified that. Because if you take uh, like uh, one of the service called APIM, if the person is having like a total 100% uh, access, that is nothing but a owner access. If you updated something, just assume that he updated something. We are unable to trace out. And we, if you want to have the, if you want to ha have that particular, uh, what do you call it, a full length log file. So make sure that you need to connect, you need to consult with the Microsoft team. Okay, so that is a, like a tricky part. So that's the reason actually we are not going to pr provide owner access to all the members who is working in that particular application. Okay. So what exactly the service principle contains? Service principle is nothing but it is the authentication purpose. Let's say, for example, I am I want to I am uh, I'm having like owner access like uh, so before creating the AKS cluster. So here I am going to prepare the service principle. OK, so with that, while creating the service principle, I will get the like uh, what do you call the services. I mean, client secret, client ID and resource IDs. OK, so these three parameters will be created with uh, again as to my ID. Again, as to my ID. So anyone can able to identify who prepared this particular service principle because my ID will be displayed over there because I'm having the owner access. And second thing is one person can able to like, uh, let's say uh, if, 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 uh, if any person, anyone having the owner access, he can easily like maintain the entire infrastructure system. Like four people are working parallelly we don't know like who prepared, who changed any, who changed, uh, who modified the existing structure, something like that. Okay, if any one person is having like owner access, if he is if he is able to create the service principle, so by the time actually he is having the full control on that particular like uh, system, and the same time, okay, at the same time, so uh, like uh, we can easily we can uh, uh, like what you call the consult with the person like if there is any kind of issues okay so like this actually we are having we need to have like we are going to have the contributor as well as the owner access okay in that particular for that particular subscription <clears throat> okay any questions ajay and uh, prabha uh, prabhakar so in here so which one is the best as per your like uh, as you said like uh, which one is the best like owner or a contributor <laughs> that is what actually see the, there is no option uh, for us. Let's say, for example, I'm. Let's just assume that 
i am working in a project i so i don't have any like uh, option so to select the contribute as well as the owner so based on my like based on my like uh, application uh, uh, requirement and based on my experience based on my knowledge i will get the owner access okay so simple example actually here i am like handling almost to four to uh, four application four major applications two minor application total six for the for okay. four major applications actually i have given like a uh, owner access to only one person and the remaining uh, people are having the contributor okay so i do have like a owner access for all the four plus two of six applications okay so, it, so something like kind the, of like i said right so no 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 if you go with the contributor you there else you will get the right access read and write access you will get with the help of the contributor as well but the only thing is like with the I'm help of the contributor I'm actually you are unable to prepare okay. the service distinct things we cannot be able to uh, create with the contributor right these three things as you mentioned here like yes we guess okay okay see service principles and aks these things are like as i said these are all the like uh, some of the like uh, resources actually okay okay a few resources mm -hmm. there in the azure public cloud okay yep yeah. so so this is about any any uh, so the thing is like as i said like you will get this uh, like owner or the contributor access based on our knowledge as well as based on our experience and depending on the requirement of the project requirement of the project yes yes so simple okay. thing is let's say simple and example and while we are carry, when we when while we creating the subscription path it will ask just uh, by default the contributor and the owner something like that it will ask for us right no 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 okay. while you see subscription access is totally different subscription in by like uh, while while requesting for the subscription access by the yes team there actually they will provide mm. the application ids and application name okay mm. but uh, coming to the once once the yes team receives the like the subscription ids and subscription names uh, from the microsoft mm. team they will transfer it to the application managers application team okay then uh, actually they will create they will they will send two different uh, uh, ids okay two okay. different ids one is for the contributor and one is for the like owner okay, okay. so sir i mean secure request if you like a secure request you need to raise the security request like a based on the ids which you received from your application manager okay yeah got it here yeah. ajay any questions yeah. Yep. Uh, what what will be the role of admin like on day on daily basis? Hello. Okay. Good question. See. Oh yeah. Can you hear me, Ajay? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. So please mute your microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Please mute. So daily activities are like uh, see infrastructure setup. Okay. So like. Uh, usually for a single application it will take 3 to 6 months of time to prepare the end to end infrastructure by using azure public cloud okay so initially that means <clears throat> before uh, the application is available before the before you deploy your application <clears throat> in production environment so by that time so your daily activities is to modify or to create the infrastructure from the scratch so once the application is available in the public cloud i mean uh, oh, uh, once it, once the application is available in the i mean uh, production environment that is the live environment so from then so like directly uh, actually you need to like uh, update the if you want to like uh, some kind of like upgradation version upgradation second thing is uh, like a uh, daily you will, you will you will get the security alerts okay like uh, some unauthorized hits are uh, uh, there in the in your in your project or something so you need to identify that particular uh, i mean what you call unauthorized hits and you need to stop uh, uh, like uh, hitting i mean you need to restrict that particular hits and the second thing is uh, sometimes actually you need to modify so it's like a it's a, like a continuous process so like uh, sometimes actually so today just assume that today i am using aks cluster version ds2v2 
okay and after some time so as per the microsoft team requirement as per the microsoft team suggestion or uh, my es team suggestion so i may need to like transfer i may need to uh, like upgrade my version from uh, ds to v to to e series or f series something like that so like this okay so that is there is like a specific like a uh, task uh, there is no specific task for the, like a daily basis but based on your like a setup okay once the application is available in the production then you need to start upgrading your like versions or you need to uh, change the existing infrastructure you need to add a, you need to add some new components or service resources okay to the existing uh, setup and also service deployments service deployments means from on prem to the cloud see we are preparing the infrastructure so once the infrastructure is available what is our next step whatever the application is available in on prem so make sure that i need to upgrade it i need to transfer that application from on prem system to the cloud right yeah okay so service deployments okay usually uh, so like initially you you, know, you may need to like uh, uh, like a uh, uh, like a deploy uh, like a two to three uh, two to three services into the production environment but uh, after some time like uh, the services the service number of services will be more okay so every so we i mean because actually we are using the agile process right so we are we will have a like a weekly or biweekly uh, releases and during the releases and uh, i mean development team once they develop their uh, uh, what do you call new apis okay so you need to start uh, deploying that new api into the cloud and second thing is when also let's say for example one of the services is already deployed into the production cloud production and uh, i mean after that actually the development team actually they start uh, uh, what you called updating the code okay whenever there is a new code is available in the development environment make sure that you need to uh, deploy the same thing into the production so it is a continuous process right so like uh, so during the particular deployment to call actually you need to start uh, redeploying all the services from uh, performance environment to the production environment you need to I, you need to verify the uh, container registries where the, where exactly the where exactly this particular service is deployed and what kind of like uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, versions that we are having and what kind of like the service endpoints actually that we need to configure in the api mr application gateways so like this actually we are having a number of like activities uh, make sure that we need to handle all these kind of like activities in our daily uh, in our daily job uh, ajay okay 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 thank you yep uh, prabha any questions prabha anora i'm okay with it okay so this is about and now we'll start the first session that is nothing but we will will start discussing the first component uh, which we are going to create it in our public cloud and one more important thing is okay before going to that as i said infrastructure preparation right so how can we prepare the infrastructure actually there are like a different there are multiple ways to prepare the infrastructure one is with the help of the portal that is nothing but a manual creation and the second one is with the help of script that is nothing but terraform script with the help of the terraform scripts we can able to prepare with the help of arm templates arm template azure arm template with the help of this arm template okay we can able to prepare the like a uh, infrastructure in the cloud but uh, which one is the better one and which we need to which one we need to select while preparing the infrastructure so ultimately we should go with this terraform script okay see right now i mean as you know companies actually they started using the azure okay very recently or like the one and a half two years effectively from last one year actually they started using this azure but still most of the companies actually they don't know like how to use the azure okay for now we can go with the like a portal creation 
but in near future make sure that you should create your infrastructure or you should uh, update your infrastructure with the help of terraform script because the eis team enterprise infrastructure security team they will not allow you to touch your infrastructure manually they will not allow if you take my case my company eis team they will not allow us to touch they will not allow us to like create the infrastructure or update the infrastructure or delete the infrastructure manually whatever the operation that you want to perform make sure you should perform through terraform script through terraform script so the point is here i mean slowly like uh, major companies uh, like uh, uh, the high high profile companies slowly they started uh, using terraform but uh, still uh, other come in most of the companies actually they are not using terraform but this is for your reference make sure that you should have some knowledge on the terraform once you like once you have proper knowledge on azure make sure you should go with the terraform script preparation as well okay and here the point is as a like a cloud engineer don't worry you are not going to you not only you any cloud engineer sector they are not going to prepare the terraform scripts from the scratch they are not going to prepare the terraform script from the scratch so the what they are going to do they are going to prepare the terraform script with the help of the existing templates which we, which they are getting in the terraform.io so we are having a like one uh, like uh, one uh, official website official organization terraform okay the website is terraform.io so if you go here you will get the templates okay based on your public cloud whether it is like aws or azure or perhaps gcp based on your public cloud you need to choose the appropriate to provide us okay once you have it you can start to prepare you you need to like just update the the script you need to update the template so which you will get it in the terraform.io that's it so you no need to the point is here you no need to a worry like how to prepare the terraform script and uh, how to start writing the terraform script okay don't worry about that so not only you as i said uh, if i'm having like i'm right now i'm having almost 10 uh, 13 years of experience almost uh, five years of experience on cloud okay in my scenario also actually i'm not going to prepare the terraform script from the scratch okay so okay like uh, I'm having some idea and I'm having some knowledge on the Terraform, how to write down Terraform scripts. I can able to write it, but uh, usually people actually they will copy the like they will take the template uh, from Terraform.io and they will start modifying that. Okay. When you will get when you will when we need to start this Terraform Dido. So once you have thorough knowledge, once you have full grip on manual creation, okay, portal portal navigation once you have the like a portal navigation and once you have like a proper uh, uh, experience or knowledge how to create a resource and uh, what kind of configuration that we need to have while creating that particular resource so once you have this kind of information then you can go with uh, like a terraform script the point is here simple example <laughs> let's say for example i want to create one aks cluster so we are having different types of AKS cluster types. We don't know like uh, as per the like a project requirement. So we need to identify and we need to select the choose the appropriate with the AKS cluster type. And uh, let's say for example, if you go with the DS2 V2, today DS2 V2 type actually we are getting two CPUs and seven GB RAM for each. Okay. Maybe tomorrow, I mean after some time actually they may change the like a configuration. Okay, they may like uh, stop uh, providing the service uh, support uh, for DS2 V2. So I should understand, like I should know, like uh, what kind of like a uh, configuration, what kind of uh, like a uh, AKS type, which I am having right now. So so this kind of information makes sure I should have. So once I have it, I can I can start preparing. I can start preparing the Terraform. So in my case also. Let's say if I am, let's say for example, if I start a new project. So in that scenario, for one of the like uh, environment, actually I'm going to create with the help of manual, manual creation, with the help of the portal only, 
i am going to create it so by that time actually i will i, I will come to know like uh, what are the resources that i am having and uh, what kind of like a configuration is having for that particular uh, resource okay i will get the full knowledge and i will get the full clarity while creating the infrastructure with the help of portal so that's the reason in <coughs> in my case in any of any 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 cloud engineers or any cloud architect they will prepare the terra and um, they will prepare the uh, like infrastructure okay for one of the one of the environment actually they will create the infrastructure manually for to the help of portal so once the dev is ready then so anyhow actually i am having like a full clarity on the dev environment so i'm having full, full clarity on the configuration part so then i can start preparing the terraform script preparation means actually i can able to like manage or i can able to update the, the terraform template which i am getting which i am having in the uh, terraform.io i can start uh, modifying that for rest of the like environments like the stage environment uat environment stage uh, performance environment like that okay so the point is here so here we are going to prepare the like a terraform oh, sorry we are going to prepare the infrastructure with the help of the portal with the help of the terraform script or with the help of the arm template arm template so you can ignore this arm template because no one is using okay resource management as a resource management templates okay so no one is using this arm template okay so like once you start preparing the like uh, er, er, like a resource azure portal itself actually it will create the arm template so let's say for example simple example i have created the dev environment with the help of portal okay by the time actually arm template will be available okay arm template will be available i mean that means in the back end so whatever the like whatever the resource that i am creating in the in the front end level in the back end actually azure will create the arm template and it will update okay at the end of the end of the like environment to setup okay if i see if i open the arm template i will get all the resources list okay with all the like the specific uh, specifications or configuration part so once i have that arm template like what i can do i can download it and i can change the like uh, what do you call it, the parameters and i can execute it from the uh, command prompt so with the help of that actually i will get the second st second environment stage environment uh, performance environment but right now arm templates actually no one is using this arm template but most of the people actually they are concentrating on this portal as well as the terra as i said here <clears throat> 95% of the companies still they are using 95% of the companies still they are using the portal okay only 5% of the companies they started using the terraform script while preparing the infrastructure okay so <coughs> why i'm stressing this particular point again and again so make sure that we should have a like a proper knowledge proper idea how to create the upper like infrastructure okay with the help of manual creation with the help of portal clear ajay and prabhakar yeah i'm clear yes yes okay so now the very first step so we will have only five, nine minutes of time okay uh, we'll cover the first uh, uh, like uh, uh, service which we are having in azure okay here the terminology is very very important so azure point of view whatever the uh, options or whatever the resources that we are having that we are getting so those are those resources we they are calling it as a services they are calling it as a services but in our real time projects make sure that whatever the services that you are using in the azure okay make sure that you should pronounce it as a resource because as i said once the infrastructure is ready make sure that you need to deploy the service from on prem system to the cloud so the point is from the development point of view whatever the code that they are preparing that code they can call it as a service that though the code that they can they can call they are, they are going to call it as a service okay so we will have like a similar like a little bit of confusion so they are also calling the service we are also calling the service so that's the reason in real time program what we are going to do so whatever the code that we are deploying okay that particular code we can call it as a service here 
and whatever the service that we are creating in the whatever the service that we are creating in the um, <coughs> azure we can call it as a, a resource okay we are calling it as a, a resource this is dev and this one is azure. clear this is very very important okay we'll discuss what is the first service which we are going to create in our azure public cloud that resource name is resource group okay the service name or the resource name is resource group. simple very very simple it's a straightforward technically make sure we should not think much on that about this but uh, what exactly the resource group? resource group is nothing but it is a collection of logical collection of the services so in general i am preparing my infrastructure in the cloud so while preparing the infrastructure i am going to use different types of services or different types of resources which azure is providing so make sure that i need to keep all these resources in one particular place right the place we can call it as a resource group the place we can call it as a resource group so technically or uh, from azure point of view resource group is nothing but it is a logical structure of the services which we are creating in the uh, which we are creating in the azure public cloud or using by using the azure public cloud so it is a logical structure of okay it is a logical structure of the logical structure of the services which we are creating which we are using or which we are creating in azure azure public cloud simple okay so this is the resource group okay logical structure of the services which we are using in the azure public cloud it's a size straight forward this is the fundamental as well as this is the basic step which we need to create while preparing the infrastructure by using azure public cloud okay how to create this resource group and while creating the resource group what are the uh, like uh, <coughs> what are the fields that we need to fill okay uh, by using portal.azure.com we'll discuss in the next class okay so make sure i think i mean uh, as prabhakar has already created his own uh, um, free trial subscription i'm requesting ajay to prepare the uh, his, my, your own uh, like uh, uh, what you called uh, um, free trial uh, subscription by using portal.azure.com clear ajay and prabhakar okay. any questions no 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 Thank you, Prabhakar. Uh, we'll see you in the in next class tomorrow at 6 p.m. So tomorrow is there, no? Uh, class is there, no? Tomorrow? For tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow we have a session. Okay. Fine, fine. You want you want a break? No, no. I don't want any break because I've already taken the break since I started. <laughs> <laughs> I it's don't okay, want okay, any break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will go only ahead. Only Saturday. Yeah. Only Sunday I need a break. That's it. No problem. Yep, yep, yep. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Prabhaka. Thank you. Yeah, Ram. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Happy yes. Pongal. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you the same to the entire family. Thank Thanks you. A lot. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye bye.